Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at curves defined by parametric equations. So what exactly are these kinds of curves? Well imagine we're looking at a point moving in the plane. And so here's our plane and it's our x and y axes as usual. And this particle can move however it wants in the plane. So it can do things like, well it can loop around on itself, it can sort of backtrack, do whatever it wants. And the point here is that this curve is not the graph of an equation y equals some function of x. It has the property that for a given x value there are multiple y values, so it doesn't pass the vertical line test and therefore is not the graph of a single function. So does that mean we stop here and we say, well, we don't have the tools to, to work with this? Because up till now we've just been dealing with curves, which were the graphs of functions. So what do we do? Well, what we can do is we can say, I'm imagining this is a particle and it's moving over time. So I'm imagining this path is being sort of laid out over time. So what we can do is we can think of x and y as functions of time. So each coordinate is a function of time. So x is some function of a variable t, and y is another function of some variable t. So what that means is that, you know, at a given point on the curve, we've got its xy coordinates, but those are each a function of some third variable t. So we can define this curve using not one function, but two functions. One which describes how the x-coordinate changes, one which describes how the y-coordinate changes. And this is essentially what we're going to do in this section. We're going to look at curves where the coordinates, the x and y-coordinates, are each defined by their own function. So let's have a look at an example. In the xy-plane, let's draw the set of all these points. So the x coordinate is given by t squared, whereas the y coordinate is given by t, and we're letting t run over all real numbers. So I'm going to put my coordinate system a little bit to the right and leave this space over here on the left to do some work. What I want to do is I want to sketch the set of all points that satisfy this. Well, what we'll do is we'll just go back to basic principles. I want to know how to sketch the set of all points. Well, I'll just pick some points and then connect them all up. So I'll pick some points that are easy to plot. So I want to plot some x, y values, but the x, y values, they're each a function of t. So I'll jot down a bunch of t values that are easy to plot. So maybe I'll go negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. These are my t values. And I'll work out the corresponding point to those t values. x is just the square of the t value, y is just the t value itself. So this is 9, negative 3, 4, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. So I've got a bunch of points here, seven points in total. Let's sketch them on our coordinate system. So my y values are equally spaced, one unit apart. So that's negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Whereas my x values, well there's only four different values they take on, either 0, 1, 4, or 9. So 0, 1, maybe 4 is out here, and then 9 is out here. So now let's plot our points. Going down the list, we've got 9, negative 3. So that's this one here. I'll just label it 9, negative 3. Then we've got 4, negative 2. And we've got 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 
0.93. So those are my seven points that I've plotted. Now I just imagine what happens for the t values that are close to these points. Well, as t moves from negative 3 to negative 2, like negative 3.1, negative 3.2, etc., for these values between negative 3 and negative 2, my x coordinate's going to go from 9 down to 4, whereas my y coordinate's going to go from negative 3 down to negative 2. So what that means is my curves got to move from one point to the other point in this direction. And similarly, it continues going, and it's going to connect all these points up like this. So there is my curve. So there's the set of all points P. What do we know about this curve? Well, it looks like, kind of looks like a parabola opening sideways. Is it? Well, notice that this curve was defined by x was given by t squared, whereas y was given by t. So, eliminating t from these equations, so we're going to combine these equations together by eliminating t, I see that, well, x is just y squared. So, x is y squared, which is a parabola. So the points t squared t live on the parabola x equals y squared. Okay, so we've got that the set of all points looks like a parabola whose equation is x equals y squared. But there's something more that we get here. We don't just get a parabola. What we get is some extra information about how these points are laid out on the parabola. We imagine, again, we're imagining maybe these are describing a particle moving in the plane. What happens as time evolves? Well, as time increases, you can see that our curve is being traced out, or our particle is moving in this direction. And how do we see that? Well, I'll just label these points. I've labeled them by their x, y coordinates, but I can also label them by the parameter t that generates them. So this was t equals negative 3. Then this was t equals negative 2. So as t in is increasing, it's moving in this direction. This is t equals negative 1. That was t equals 0. This is t equals 1. This is t equals 2. And this is t equals 3. So we get that the set of all points is this parabola, and the particle, if we're thinking about it as a particle, the particle is moving along the parabola in this direction. Okay, so let's get a little bit of terminology nailed down. We're going to consider two functions, f and g, and they're going to be, well, f is the function that describes how the x-coordinate changes, and g is the one that describes how the y-coordinate changes, and they're going to be defined over some interval i. We're assuming that f and g are continuous on i. Then what do we have? Well, the set of all points, f of t, g of t, where t ranges through all the values in the interval i, that's called the per parametric curve. So if I flash back to the previous example here, this curve that we've laid out here, that's called the parametric curve. So this parabola, in this case, is called the parametric curve. The variable t is called the parameter. And we say that the curve c is defined by these parametric equations, x equals f of t and y equals g of t. So in the previous example, the equations were x equals t squared, y equals t. We say that the two equations, or the parametric equations, is a parametrization of C. So the equations together form a parametrization of the parametric curve C. If our interval i goes from a to b, 
so it starts at A and it ends at B, then the point corresponding the, to the parameter value A is called the initial point, and the point corresponding to the parameter value B is called the terminal point. So let's go ahead and do a few examples. So this one's asking us to find two parameterizations of the unit circle. So the point here is, is that in this previous definition, we say that, look at d here, we say that x equals f of t, y equals g of g is a parameterization of c. A given curve could have more than one parameterization, and that's what this example is having us find. We're going to find two different parameterizations of the unit circle. So let's sketch the unit circle first of all. So our unit circle, circle of radius 1, centered at the origin, looks like this. So radius 1. So it's out here, 1, negative 1, up here at 1, down here at negative 1. What's a parameterization of this? What is one parameterization? So we need to come up with functions, x and y, and a parameter for which, as the parameter changes, the functions describing x and y will trace out this curve. So, there's actually one fairly obvious choice if we remember the definition of sine and cosine. Sine and cosine are actually, by their very definition, they're defined to be the parameterization of the circle. So let's see why. So if I take x to be cosine of t, and y to be sine of t. Think of t as the angle, in this case, measured from the positive x-axis. So as I look at an angle here, let's say t, that line segment, with making that angle with the x-axis, intersects the circle at a point. We defined the coordinates of that point to be cosine of t and sine of t. That's the definition of sine and cosine. So the fact that cos of t and sine of t is a param form of parameterization of the unit circle is merely just because that's how they were defined. So there's our parameterization. What is our t value going to range over? Well, we could let t be all real numbers. Maybe just uh, it'll be better just to nail some things down so we can talk about initial and terminal points as well. Maybe we'll give a finite interval for which we trace the whole curve. So let's say we'll start with t being 0. What do I have to let t go around to so that eventually I've completed the circle? Well, if I let t go all the way around to 2 pi, then I will have completed the circle. So that will give me a full parameterization of the circle. What I have here is that this point corresponds to t equals 0. And then as t increases, I trace out the circle in this direction. So this would be corresponding to t equals pi by 2. And then this is corresponding to t equals pi. And it continues around. This is t equals 3 pi by 2, all the way back to where we started, which is t equals 2 pi. So there's our parameterization. So it might be worthwhile for us at this point just to show you how you would check that this is a parameterization of the unit circle. It's not really necessary here because the cosine and sine are, are defined to be the parameterizations of the circle, so I don't really need to check them because it's inherent in their definition. But doing this check will allow us to see how we could do this check for other examples where we're not too familiar with them. So how would I check this? Well, I need to know that these functions, co cosine and sine, give me the coordinates of a point x, y, which satisfies the equation of a circle. So I'll check that. What's x squared plus y squared? Well, x is given by cosine of t, so that's cos squared. y is given by sine of t, so that would be sine squared. Oh, and I know cos squared plus sine squared is 1. And therefore, the point x, y, given by cos t sine of t, lives on the unit circle. How do we get another example? How do we get another example? So I want to find another parameterization of the unit circle. Well, we can look at our previous example, cos of t and sine of t, and see that 
One way we knew that that worked was because when we did the check, we plugged it into the equation for the circle, it worked out. So maybe I could do another one where I think of it in terms of finding functions which would satisfy the equation of the circle. I could go with cos again, and I could go with sine again, but instead of taking my argument of those functions as t, why don't I take them to be some multiple of t, let's say 2t. Then I can do the check again, and I see that if I take x squared plus y squared, I get cos squared 2t plus sine squared of 2t, and cos squared plus sine squared, that's 1, so it works out. So this will parameterize the circle. What do I need to take t to be? What's the minimum interval I need to take in order for it to trace out the whole circle? So maybe I'll start t at 0. Where is that? Well, that would be cos of 0, sine of 0, so that would be 1, 0, so that's right here. It's t equals 0. And then as t increases, what happens? Well, as t increases from 0, my cosine of 0 is 1, but as t increases a little bit, the cosine value starts to drop. But sine of 0 is 0, and as we start to increase away, so as t values start to increase from 0, 2t becomes slightly bigger than 0, and so the sine values start to increase. So we start going in this direction here. And when do I get all the way back where I started? Well, I get it back to where I started when this argument in here, when cos of the angle I'm putting in here is 2 pi. But I already have a 2 there. So I just need t to go as far as pi. And then I've traced it all out. So what we have is that getting back there again, takes us all the way to pi. So when t is 0, it starts here, it goes around. We get up here when t is pi by 4. Over here when t is pi by 2. Down here when t is 3 pi by 4. And then back to where we started when t is pi. So if we look at these two parameterizations that we've given, they look very similar in that cosine was describing the x-coordinate and sine was describing the y-coordinate, it's just that we changed 1 by this factor of a 2. And what that seemed to do is it allowed us to trace the entire circle in only half the amount of time. So this one, the second example here, seems to be tracing the circle faster than the first one, in fact twice as fast. So we'll call this parameterization is twice as fast as the one given in part one. And now you can probably see that we didn't have to stop at two parameterizations. I could have said, fine, 20 parameterizations, and all you need to do is keep changing that argument there. Uh, instead, maybe I want it to trace it out three times as fast. Well, I could take cos 3t, sine 3t. Or maybe I wanted it to trace the circle out 10 times as fast as the original one. Well, that would be cos 10t, sine 10t. So why not, as a third example, let's look at an example where instead of tracing it out in the... Oh, wait a minute. I, I see here I've drawn one of the arrows backwards. You're probably already noticing this. That arrow should be consistent with all the other ones. So in these first two examples, we trace out the circle in the counterclockwise direction. Maybe we want to come up with a parameterization where we trace it out in the clockwise direction. So I'm doing a third parameterization here even though we were only asked for two. But let's do it anyway. So in these previous ones, we took the cosine function to describe the x-coordinate and the sine function to describe the y-coordinate. Notice our check only required that the sum of the squares was equal to one. So what if I reverse them? What if I said, let's take x to be sine of t and y to be cos of t? Our check still works out, because sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So this still is a parameterization of the circle. And let's again let t go from 0 to 2 pi. Now the point is, how is this being traced out? When t is 0, 
Let's figure out where the initial point is. Sine of 0 is 0. Cos of 0 is 1. So we're up here at 0, 1. That's t equal to 0. Maybe we'll go to t equals pi by 2 to see where that one is. Sine of pi by 2 is 1. Cos of pi by 2 is 0. So we're over here at 1, 0. What about when t is pi? Sine of pi is 0. Cos of pi is negative 1. So we're down here. That's t equals pi. And then if we go to 3 pi by 2, we're over here. And then once we hit 2 pi, our terminal point agrees with our initial point. And so we're back where we started. And so we're tracing it out in the clockwise direction. So there's another parameterization. So a few different parameterizations of the unit circle.